Hello, welcome dear astrology friends. Welcome to this yearly horoscopes video of 2024. I'm going to have a look at what 2024 is, in my humble opinion. What is it all about? And then I'm going to have a look, a quick look, though, at every single sign. Why a quick look? Because I don't want to go too much into depth. I want to have that overview. You know, this is about the helicopter view of, for each and every sign, where is, what is going on, where it is going on, and how we can apply those energies at its best. So, of course, there's tons of things going on. I'm not going to talk about the Mercury retrogrades. I'm not going to talk about the eclipses. Although, I'm going to talk about, first and foremost, where the eclipses are going on. But first and foremost, what do I think is the most important of 2024? Chiron conjoining with the North Node. Second, Jupiter conjoining with Uranus. And that's it. That's it. I don't care what other stuff is going on. I mean, from experience and from doing astrology for so long, this is important. This is an opportunity for freedom, Jupiter, Jupiter with Uranus, for freedom, for freeing ourselves up and to give purpose in our lives. And this is also, of course, you've got to take it. It has to be real. And secondly, there is an opportunity for healing. There is a triggering, a massive triggering going on with the North Node, where we need to go and the conjunction with the uh, Chiron there. So these are opportunities. When are these going to happen? They are going to happen. Jupiter conjunct Uranus in April. So you're going to feel that the whole April. But that is like the culmination point of these two planets together. So again, this is purpose. This is purpose. And I'm going to have a look at all the signs where this is falling in your chart. Because, I mean, you don't have that quite often these two planets together. In a natal chart, for instance, this gives a very kind of intuitive personality. And certainly in Taurus, it's almost visceral. It's almost gut feeling. It's quite raw. It's quite real as well. It's, um, it's very authentic energy. And um, so the other energy, like Chiron with the North Node, is also so real and raw because it's in Aries. And Aries is about... You know, Chiron and Aries, it's about I exist and the wound is there. We're, um, we're all going to feel it somewhere in our chart when we want to get healing. And um, that is by going through that pain and feeling it and then healing it, basically. So an interesting year of lots of opportunities. The other outer planets are not really doing stuff with each other that I find important. You know, there's no Pluto square Uranus or there's no Saturn opposite Neptune or whatever. No, it is, um, you know, the biggest shift or the biggest things are definitely those two things that I just mentioned. There's no Venus retrograde. Yes, Mercury retrograde, but as usual, a couple of times, three to four times in a year. Um, so we always reassess things. We all have our times where we need to reassess something in our lives. Mars is going retrograde at the very end of the year. I'm not going to mention that because it's on the 7th, 6th, 7th of December. So that's the whole end of the year that Mars is going to retrograde at six degrees of Leo. So there is going to be some actions at the very end of the year that we are going to reassess for sure. And then when we have those eclipses, of course, going on in uh, the North Node being in Aries, so eclipses there in March, uh, and in April the eclipses are going to be there, and then in October um, as well, September and October, where and the South Node in Libra. So we have to step away from that hypocrite kind of energy that is the pitfall of the Libra, right? It's a pitfall. I mean, it's not all Librans or hypocrites, right? It's the pitfall of every sign. Every sign has a pitfall. That's the pitfall. And we don't want to go there anymore. We want to let go of that. And we want to go towards the good stuff in Aries, which is accountability, which is pioneering, which is, you know, having a lot of courage to do something where you are afraid of, but that is necessary for your authenticity. That is what Aries is all about. So Pluto, let, let's have a look at where the planets are. 
uh, very quickly because um, I'm going to explain them in the signs. Jupiter will be in Taurus from the beginning of the month up until the 26th of May. And then it will shift into Gemini, which is way lighter, which is way more communicative. So finding our purpose there. Saturn in Pisces from 3 to 19 degrees. Uranus still in Taurus from 19 to, to 27 degrees. So that's where it's going to transit during the year. Neptune, very end of Pisces, 25 to 29 degrees. And Pluto for most of the year in Aquarius. It's going to from zero to two degrees maximum. So the very beginning of it. It's going to tiptoe again in Capricorn though at 29 degrees of Capricorn in September, November. Okay. So let's get to this for the signs. What, it, what is this all going to, uh, how is it going to unfold for Aries? For Aries, let's start with Pluto. But because that is where our strength is, where we can find our power, where we can transform. When we surrender to something that is not in our control, and the better we surrender, the easier it gets. And that is for you, the 11th house now. So Pluto is in Aquarius. It's going to be easier for you with that transformational energy in a sign that is air, because air and fire, that goes well with each other. So... This is the field of your goals, your goals for the future, your friend circle. There could be a transformation going on there um, that has to do with a breaking down and a building up in order to build up again. A breaking down from old, old friendships, from uh, friendships that are not authentic anymore or that has run its course karmically. It's not always that these people are bad or we are bad or, you know, it's kind of, it's a death and a rebirth here. So you're definitely, um, or it could be one friend that is going through a very transformational time and that has a very uh, strong effect on you as well. It is intense. There's some intensity with friends and also with goals. So your goals, you could have old goals dying and new goals arising. Then Neptune is still in Pisces. So that is the same old, same old of many years that the yearly horoscopes I've been doing. Neptune in the 12th house is pretty nice. It shows that you can relax and you can meditate if you want to. And you have to as well to reload your ba batteries and to... It's a good way of escaping, but make sure it's a healthy way, of course. You know, Neptune in the 12th house can be a bit of magic there. It can be very romantic as well. So use that energy where, um, you know, for relaxation, it's really outer-worldly energy, so to speak. So you could have like very good mystical kind of experiences or just enjoying yourself by really... Like when you go to the movie, for instance... Um, and it's, it's a movie that you just lose yourself in that movie. That's Neptune in the 12th house. And that gives yourself that feeling of escapism, right? But in a good way that you see something different, you have a different perspective. Very nice for that. And for you, this, of course, and yes, of course, Pluto is going to tiptoe back in, uh, again in September and November uh, in Capricorn. But um, that will be, uh, I'll, I'll get back to that in uh, the monthly horoscopes. But what it means is that there's some finishing up things to do around your career uh, or around how you want to be seen in the world or with parents as well. Jupiter Uranus, what I was talking about, you know, that conjunction. That massive, beautiful conjunction, it's in your second house. So there's something about your finances you can free yourself up. There's something about your purpose, uh, your, your confidence that is getting more rooted. What, what, what amazing energy here that you have to your position here, to your availability here. Use it. Use it. There could be, um, because Uranus is sudden and Jupiter is a lot. There could be a chunk of money coming in and um, that is, you know, the windfall that you could have. 
And, but whatever it is, it's something positive and it's something real. So I really like it for you. And then in um, uh, the end of May, Jupiter goes into your third house, which is a very airy house. And again, Jupiter is an air sign that goes well with Aries. It's, it's fantastic here to explore, to do short trips, to travel, to teach, to learn, to expand your mind and to learn hands-on things, to learn how to write, for instance, learn how to teach, well, whatever it is. It's a very, very adorable energy. Saturn is also in the 12th house, so it's still going to be there together with the Neptune, but in the... Um, uh, a bit in the midst of uh, uh, Pisces. And that is showing like order in that house as well. So you could be going off in La La Land with this Neptune in your 12th house, but Saturn is going to make sure that there are better boundaries with the es escapism, so to speak. So it's really about making structure in your consciousness, uncon in your subconsciousness. It's making structure there. And when you do that, you have more control. You have more control in life. Very interesting. But of course, last but not least, which is the most important for you to talk about, is the North Node in your sign with Chiron. So what is going on here is that you will have to go through some pains and to put yourself out there. And um, I mean, literally or figuratively, putting yourself out there, showing who you are and what you are all about, like a true Aries. And then indeed, the fear that comes with that, going through that barrier of fear, which is, of course, a lot about connection, because when we are showing our true selves, and especially when we haven't done that for a while, we can lose connections. And um, so on a relationship level for Aries people, it's an important year. It's an important year of the balance that we need to have. So if you are in a relationship where you feel you have been people-pleasing too much, this is an opportunity to take back your power. But it can also mean that um, if you are single, for instance, that you, because you show your authentic self, that you're going to attract the right person. Very, very good energy indeed. Make the best out of it. Taurians, what is this all about? Let's start for you. What is the most important thing? This is Jupiter, Uranus, of course. This conjunction in your sign. And it's at 21 degrees of Taurus. So if you've got planets there, wow. There is this new you, and I've been talking about this for quite a while, but it's you freeing yourself up, and you're going to love it. You're going to enjoy it, and you're going to feel it's easier than you thought it would be. It's about relationships because it's in the first house towards the seventh house. So when you are single, yes, you could be attracting uh, people that are so drawn to you because you are so real and you are so your authentic self. I mean, there's nothing more sexy than being real. And you're going to attract the right people because they're going to vibrate on what you're exuding. If you are in an existing relationship, it's a bit the same energy, you know. If you're truly going to show who you are, the relationship could improve or the relationship could end. You know, it's that risk that you are saying, like, it's a now or never. It's now or never. It's, it's about me. It's about the purpose of expansion. And I can only expand when I'm truthful and when I'm real and authentic. This is about authenticity. And, um, yeah, I really, really like this for you. And Jupiter goes into your second house from the end of May. So after all that... You could say those chances that you're getting, there is this sense of confidence. There is the, also a growth of money possible for you with this Jupiter transiting your second house. Then Saturn and Neptune are in your 11th house. These are a bit um, contradictory energies, you could say. So the 11th house is the house of friends, and it's also the house of your goals for the future. So 
in each of those areas, there is a time of being serious, which is Saturn, of being less is more. It's better less friends, but two or three good friends than like 11,000 Facebook friends and, you know, you know, no one. Um, so it's about truthfulness and support, but it's also about friends that are Neptunian, who are very empathic, who are very caring, who are um, interested in your healing. So there is really an interesting energy in your friendship house that is a bit contradictory, but is um, when you have both of these energies, it can really help you to grow and to be that authentic self that you want to be. So make use of it, make use of it and be that good friend as well, of course, with these two, two energies, having that there. Also with goals for the future, you can have a very big vision towards something, but you also have to be realistic here. When you have your own business, it's a, a money house, the 11th house. So you have to have that balance between being good, having good boundaries with your finances, but also having those dreams and wanting to expand. So it's a very interesting energy for you in those uh, area, in that area. Now, Chiron and the North Node conjunction is in your 12th house. So there's a lot of healing going on behind the scenes. People don't know it, that you are dealing with that. And even you barely know it because the 12th house is your, is the unconscious. With the North Node there and Chiron, it's triggering you to get things out of your subconscious so that you're dealing with the pain and that you're not running away from it. And when you do that, you can heal and you can have that better life, that better authentic life that you thought you cannot reach. So the 12th house is about old patterns, toxic patterns, patterns that are not good for you. You know, self-destructive powers, um, um, self yes, self-destructive energy. Everyone has that. But when you're not an, aware of it, how can you fix it? How can you heal it? So those, those energies can come up for you. And especially around March, uh, April time, February, March, April time, or the first couple of months of the year, you could say. But great healing capacity here. Pluto is for most of the year in your 10th house. This is significant. This is about your career. This is about how you want to be seen in the world. This is about a connection with parents, your connection with parents. There's a transformation. There's a letting go of something in order to transform. So yes, a lot of you uh, are maybe afraid to have a new career, are afraid of surrendering. There's some sort of surrendering that, that a lot of Taurians will need to do around their career. But when you do that, when you go with that, there is like something new in the career waiting for you that you are a bit afraid of, but that you are, if you are afraid of it, do it, do it. <laughs> you know, these are general horoscopes though, but, um, this is when you're doing it. You're going to meet your authentic self. You're going to do something that is more fitting to who you are. And that's an amazing thing. It's tiptoeing back in September and November. Um, Capricorn, um, Pluto in your ninth house. So you're going to revisit some stuff that has to do with some old mindset that might not be good for you that you're going to shift there as well. But all in all, a very important year for you. Gemini's, Gemini's, the most important for you. Let's see. Um, the, there are two things here. This Chiron and the North Node in your 11th house. This is an, this is beautiful because Aries is, uh, sextiling your energy. So there is here, but you will have to go through some pain of some sorts and some, triggers of uh, wounds that you can now heal. And it's related to your 11th house. So this is about friendships and this is about goals for your future. So where is it that you want to have those new friendships, that you want to have those new circles, that kind of 
help you to have those goals that you want for the future. You're ready for a renewal of friends. You're ready. I'm not saying that all friends need to go. That not at all. But I'm saying you're ready for newness. You're ready for exploring. You're ready for exploring when it comes to new objectives for the future. But if you have your own business, this is amazing. This is expansion of your business. This is huge growth of your business as well because it's a financial house. So go for it for sure. Jupiter Uranus is in your 12th house. This is very spiritual. That conjunction here in Taurus in your 12th house is like you feel that you have support behind the scenes. I've been talking about this with this Jupiter in your 12th house. And of course... This is this preparation for Jupiter when it goes into your first house, which will be at the end of May. So you can find purpose in peace, in rest, in, um, in taking a meditation, in doing some yoga, in doing something alternative. And what is alternative for you? This is this Jupiter Uranus, but it is very real and raw and you feel it. That's working for you. And then it shifted to your first house. This is amazing. This is for the Geminis. It's a good year. Jupiter having in your first house, it's expansion. It's learning, teaching. Um, when you are single, you can meet someone. And it's just because you're ex expanding and you are leaving in yourself. And when you are in a relationship, you can grow with that person. It's amazing. Jupiter in your first house is the best thing for that whole year. For sure. Pluto is in the ninth house, which is also amazing for you. Although it stays Pluto, right? So the, the power is in your mind, dear Geminis. Pluto in the um, ninth house. So there is where the transformation is. This Pluto in the ninth house is all about surrendering to belief systems that are no longer working for you and replacing them with new ones. And you've got a long time to do so. Then we've got Saturn and Neptune in your 10th house. So there is this very interesting energy of this combination, like the 10th house is your public life, it's your work, um, it's how you want to be seen in the world if you don't work, and it's your parents or one of your parents. So here we've got that Saturn planet that is demanding authority, that is demanding structure, seriousness, hard work, but also Neptune that is demanding magic in your life, that is demanding empathy and understanding and um, healing as well. It's beautiful to have these two energies in the house of work. Cancerians. Okay, Cancerians, what is most important for you? It's definitely healing. Chiron and the North Node in the highest point of your horoscope in the 10th house. So you are going to get triggered by work. Let's talk about that. If you don't work, I'll get back to that in a minute. But when you do have a job, you're going to be triggered. It could be a new job. It could be a, a new thing appearing that has to do with your career. And although it is fascinating and it's fiery and you're going to feel all fired up and you're loving it, it's triggering. It's triggering old pains from the past that you want to go through it. If you're fearing it, do it anyways. Do it anyways because, because there is a healing by going through that fear. And it could be a job that you're afraid of, of doing, but the power is and getting your power is in doing it anyways and in showing who you truly are and having the courage to stand above what you are fearful of. And that is by healing. So there's great healing opportunities here, but your work is involved in some sort of way with it. And also parents, it could be that a parent could have a transformation there and that has a knock-on effect on you as well. But a lot of growth as well. You know, if you have your own business, this is fantastic. This could mean a, a big growth in your business, but in something new that you're doing. When you don't have a job, this is about how you present yourself in the world. Who, who are you? 
and ask what, what kind of woman, what kind of man are you and do you want to be in the future? It's a very significant question. Who, who am I want to be? Who, who do, what is the energy I want to exude? Because that's what you're going to attract as well. This Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, this lovely, expansive, raw, real energy that is really supportive is in your friend sector. It's in the 11th house. So it could have to do with friends and it could have to do with your goals for the future, probably related as well, or for some of you with, with the work or the new, new work that you are doing. Friends can be of a tremendous inspiration for you here and vice versa, you as well. There is a lot of purpose. There could be uh, one or, or more friends that are um, some sort of a mentor for you that um, give you a sense of more freedom that unlock that for you and you for them as well. So it goes both ways, of course. Um, when you are single, for instance, this could be that a friend from maybe a friend from abroad or for someone that has a totally different background than you, that, um, that becomes a lover. You know, it could be that as well, which is fantastic because this is really energy that is really faithful and, and, um, very authentic. So Pluto, Pluto is out of that seventh house. Yes, around September to November, there is this energy that Pluto is coming back into the relationship sector. So there you will still have to clean something up or figure out something that has been buried. Uh, but mostly it is done, but there's still going to be some pieces left there. But Pluto is shifting into your eighth house. Now, talking about depth, <laughs> what, a, what a deep year this is going to be. Pluto is transformation. It's a dead and a rebirth, and it's in the house of dead and rebirth. So does it mean that people are going to die around you? No, not necessarily. It could, it could, but it's, it certainly means that there are things that you will have to surrender, uh, the things that are out of your control. And it could have to do with a relationship um, because the eighth house is the values and the money, um, the, uh, the things that you have together. There could be some sort of a transformation. So you could be, maybe you just uh, have a new relationship, for instance. And then Pluto in the eighth house means a drastic, it's like, both of, uh, of maybe you are marrying in this in that year in this year and pluto in the eighth house means like it's a total knocking down of the financial structures that you already have and now you're building up something with another person you're investing um so it could be that for other people it could mean um because of a divorce for instance that things need to be built up again in a new way um, for others, it can mean investments, that you are investing in real estate, for instance, and that those shifts and these investments that are going to be very important for you to transform. It has a transforming effect on you. And last but not least, on a deep psychological level, it's intimacy. It's, it's clear. Pluto in the eighth house wants intimacy. And it wants real, true connection with body, mind, and soul. So not on a superficial level. You know, you could say, for instance, like uh, the eighth house is connected to sex, right? But it's not like the sex from the fifth house. The eighth house is body, mind, and soul. It's more than that. It's deeper. It's trust. Trust issues could come up here from the past and that now have to be uh, healed again for you. So it's a lot about trusting and really, truly connecting with someone, you know, on, on all the levels, you know, body, mind, and soul. And that's going to, because you crave intimacy with Pluto in the eighth house and you can't get in, intimacy is, can be, uh, um, you can get intimacy by sexuality, but not alone by that. It's more than that. It's deeper. It's show me the vulnerabilities of you. And I will not take advantage of that. That's true vulnerability and that's true trust. 
water deep here, this is for you. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, but as I said, you know, uh, there is opportunity, of course, as well for um, your mind growing and being interested in a lot of things with Saturn and Neptune there. So you've got Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. I mean, that goes well with cancer energy. It's a water sign. So your mind, by traveling, by uh, learning, it, that is really going to help you to have to keep that helicopter view, to keep it structured, but um, in what you're believing in, but also to being not rigid, right? To be open for new belief systems. Um, yeah, interesting. Leos, what is the most important for you? Well, it's definitely the top of your chart. You're having Jupiter and Uranus at the top of your chart in a career house. And this means, this means a lot of opportunity for work and career. Something new there, something of a lot of purpose. And all of a sudden it can change your life. So tap into that new energy for sure. If you're not having a career, this is about how you show your, how you show up in life, in the public life. How are you showing up? You can show something about yourself. You're a teacher here of some sorts, just by how you live your life. You can be a teacher for others as well. It's also about parents or one parent. There is something going on there that is purposeful and that has a knock-on effect for you as well. At the end of May, Jupiter shifts into your 11th house of friends, groups of people, expansion there, new friendships, communication, uh, connection, because mental connection for sure, new goals for the future for sure, growth when you have your own business for sure, um, help that you're getting from people that are in good positions, it's expansion. If you have your own business and you, you um, are for, uh, for some sort of reason in the social media, it's expansion. Fantastic. The North Note and Chiron in a fellow firehouse in the ninth house. Wow, that is amazing. That is healing capacity through teaching you, either you being the teacher or you learning. Learning by traveling, by reading, studying, uh, publishing writing, getting involved with, uh, uh, sorry, that, uh, a message popped up there, getting involved with freshness of knowledge and growth in your mental state in having a better connection with the divine. And that is, of course, also because you are triggered. Your belief system will be triggered into a new one. And, but if you go for it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a lot of strength for sure. I mean, mental strength, Pluto, uh, Chiron and the North Node, you know, wanting to heal through your mind. Saturn and Neptune are in your eighth house. It's a bit of a weird combination to have that. But the eighth house is about death and rebirth. It's about money. So for you, it would be good to have structure in money, but also to be open for um, not being too dependent on the material stuff, which is uh, because the eighth house is also the value that we get from others. So it could be that the empathy that you get from others, not only the money, but the empathy. Um, and that could be very, very interesting for you, you know, it could be very interesting also with Saturn in uh, Pisces, which is a harsh kind of energy to have there because the eighth house is about intimacy. It's about, and Saturn kind of restricts it, but it, it's about what is intimacy and how do I trust in life? How do I trust in life? Um, and to that one specific person, how can I show who I who I really are and dealing with the fear that I have of doing so. So really deep when it comes to relationships, for sure, for sure. I'm talking about relationships, Pluto in the seventh house. Oh boy, that's a big one for you, dear Leos. Pluto in the, you, you're, you're transforming through your relationships. So this is about power. 
This is about not giving away your power. You know, you could be attracting someone that is mesmerizing, that is Plutonian, charismatic, and whatnot. So that then it's all about not losing your power and not and still being and keeping your authenticity there and not in order for you to want them to get you. If it's in an existing, it can also be the other way around. You know, someone wants to boss you around. So be aware of that manipulation. You have to learn how to stand up for yourself and, and fearing the rejection at the same time. So this is about definitely an intense year, um, especially when you were a Leo at the very beginning, you know, between zero and three, four degrees of Leo, you will feel it the most. But you're transforming through your connections for sure. Okay. So Virgos, 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 what is the most important for you? Well, what I truly like for you the most is this Jupiter Uranus. I mean, it's in your ninth house. This is amazing to learn, to expand, to travel. Uh, I think a lot of Virgos will do that. They will travel. They will spread out the message. They will uh, learn, teach. Um, they will find that connection with the divine and it's making you strong. It's making you strong because you believe. You believe that you're part of a bigger system. And because you do believe that, it's, um, it's almost as if you know and feel now that the universe got your back. And when you have that, I mean, you are unstoppable. You are really kind of, the strength that you have there is, is amazing. And no one can take it away from you. So enjoy that for sure. Then Jupiter at the end of the uh, month is shifting into the 10th house of career. So your career, this is the year where your career can boost, where your career can expand, where your career can grow, where you can travel because of your career, teach because of your career. And if you're not having a career, it's you presenting yourself in the world with a more Jupiterian kind of vibe, which is you being the teacher and um, because of your energy. Now, this Chiron North node is in your eighth house. So there is deep healing possible. And there is that you could be triggered. You know, some fears could come up. Oh, oh boy, don't we know that, right? I say we because, you know, my, my son is in Virgo and a couple of other personal planets as well. But um, not all personal. But anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that when you get triggered, dear Virgos, it's about going, accepting the trigger and welcoming it and working with it, battling it. You know, that's battling. Why? Because it's Aries. And that's going to give you so much, again, power, strength, unstoppable, untouchable almost kind of energy here. So um, there could be some crisis happening. It's, it's, um, it's about surrender because the eighth house is um, a very karmic house. So it's not about you not being perfect or you not doing the right thing. It's just happening. And but how you deal with it and not running away from the pain. And that's going to give that transformation there. It could also mean uh, shared money, money that you share, taxes, refunds, uh, inheritances. It could be that as well, that there is a bit of a focus there. Saturn and Neptune are in your seventh house. So relationships are important. And it's important for the Virgos in the relationships to, on the one hand, to have your boundaries, but not too much. You know, be, be careful there if people uh, are criticizing you too much or, or whatever, or you are criticizing others too much, um, because then you will feel no connection anymore. And, but also too much of a Neptune is also not good which is uh, you being in La La Land and letting people cross your boundaries that you don't want to cross. So I think it's a good balance here. It's a good balance. Definitely for some of you, uh, certainly the ones who have planets at the very end of Virgo, so who were born like around 
17th, 18th of September and onwards. Neptune is very strong in your chart there. So be aware of not letting other people crossing your boundaries or you crossing other people's boundaries. And uh, for the Virgos who've got planets between um, 3 degrees up until 19 degrees, it's more Saturn opposing your energy. That is good to work hard for getting what you want, also in a relationship to have those healthy boundaries. And some relationship will be tested, for sure, for sure. But sometimes that's necessary, you know. Pluto is in your sixth house, which is your house. So you're ready for some drastic changes in your routines, for some drastic changes when it comes to your day-to-day -day life, your work. That could be uh, an old job is going, a new job is coming in, old routines that are shifting, that your routines are getting upside down. And uh, it's because it's for good. It's to, um, to get into a better routine and a more efficient routine. And it's also about your health, about transformation when it comes to your health, about going deep. When there is like an issue, for instance, that, that doesn't have to be one, but if there is one, with Pluto there, it uh, means that you're going to go to the root of the matter. You're going to go deep on a soul level, on a psychological level. Of course, also the physical level and whatnot. Do what you've got to do. But it's a good time here to go on the alternative side as well with going deep and understanding where those deep buried emotions are coming from and causing uh, some sort of a um, issue that you need to address. And um, but that's interesting. You like that because you are Virgo. You want to go deep there to be more authentic and to find yourself more in, in a good way. Okay, Librans, your, seven, your relationships, relationships, relationships. If you're single, you can definitely meet someone. With the North Node there, with Chiron, it could mean that it's going to be very triggering for you. Old wounds coming up, but it's there to heal. If you are in an existing relationship, this could mean that there is a, something shifting there. Whatever it is, it needs to be addressed. And there is all, and it has to do as well with the old part of you that is not real to let that go. Um, it's about the fear of rejection for sure, but doing it anyways, you know, maybe you are single for such a long time, but now you're going to go for it and you're saying, okay, if they reject me, you know, it is what it is. I'm doing my best and. I invest 50%, they invest 50%. It's a lot about balance in your relationship. That's the key. It's a beautiful energy for you, for sure. This Jupiter Uranus is in the eighth house. I like that as well, because uh, that could mean intimacy, more intimacy, um, because that authenticity that comes up of another person. It could mean... Uh, a growth in your sexuality, but it's more than just sex. It's about body, mind, and soul. And it could also mean a growth in your finances, the finances that you share with someone else, the resources there. Um, it could also mean investments, investments that are going good for you. And it could also mean deep psychological understanding, the occult, for instance, and studying it and seeing new things and having those epiphanies for sure jupiter is going into your ninth house in gemini a fellow air sign which is wonderful for you at the end of may so this is travel expansion there studying learning teaching growing and whatnot it is amazing to have jupiter in your ninth house it's like you're growing expansively because you are feeling more connected with everything that is so it's a very spiritual kind of position to have jupiter in your ninth house for sure um there is this pluto in your fifth house 
in Aquarius. That's interesting. It's a fellow air sign, so it's it's good. It's a trine, what we call in astrology, but it's Pluto. So Pluto in the fifth house, wow. So you are going deep and going real when it comes to the heart chakra. I mean, no toxic relationships for you. Or if you're going to have them, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. You're going to learn a lot about your own authenticity if you're going to have or being into those relationships. It's about teaching you something that you cannot control love. That love doesn't need to be chased. It's there or it's not there. And it's um, when you surrender to that, true love comes real love comes it doesn't have to be earned so it's another deep lesson it's a lot about relationships and of course you're a libra so you're supposed to be interested in in that um well supposed to i mean when you have a lot of libra energy but um it's interesting here it could be children as well that there is transformation going on around the topic of children but whatever it is it's deep and it has that energy of transformation. Saturn and Neptune in your sixth house is like putting order in your work and in your day-to-day -day routines and uh, to stay healthy, but also to let loose, right, every now and then. So it's a lot about that balance because Saturn is about boundaries. Neptune is not, no boundaries. So it's about that give and take in that area of your life. So there could be some structures that you're doing, but at the same time, letting loose and saying, I'm staying in my bed now. And no, I'm gonna work on a Sunday and not now on a Wednesday. You know, that kind of energy as well. Scorpios, wow, relationships. I like this for you. Wow, what an opportunity. Scorpios, if you are single, Wow, you could meet someone very spiritual, very interesting, very real, very purposeful, very expansive, expanding your mind. Jupiter Uranus in your seventh house. That is a mentor that is appearing, you could say. Whether you are in a relationship or not, it doesn't have to be necessarily a rom romantic relationship. It could be someone who's almost like a therapist for you, you know, that Jupiter Uranus, because they can see through you instantly with that uranus kind of lightning vibe kind of energy so but when you're single you could definitely attract someone and it's um bigger than life and you're gonna find yourself so happy and real real uh, authentic and if you are in a relationship there could be a breakthrough here as well that's definitely helping you to have purpose in a connection. Beautiful, beautiful. Love that for you. The Chiral North node is in your sixth house. So there could be some issues coming up that have to do with work, your routines, um, health that you want to address and that you want to go for that you want to go for to improve it, that it suits more your authenticity, especially with work, of course, that you can do something that is now related to what you want to do with the work, uh, in the work area. But also with your health, the new things that you want to do that are more suiting you and that are going to more routines, better routines that are going to help you to stay out of the 12th house, which is the house of addictions, the house of um, hospitals, prisons. You, want to, you don't want to get there. So it's about focusing on that sixth house, like new routines, different routines, different fitness projects, whatever, different work as well. So that's exciting, very exciting for you. Pluto in the fourth house. Wow, wow. Your modern ruler in the fourth house, the deepest point of your chart, which is where your emotional well being is. So, Pluto is about dead and rebirth. Some of you are going to move. Some of you are going to renovate. Some of you are going to literally break down a home to build up a home again. But it's for lots of you also on a deep level. There are some emotional 
setups that need to go for you. Like it could also be apparent that there is a transformation going on with them as well. But it's something deep that you kind of react or respond when it comes to emotions, the fight or flight. And it's like changing here. There is like your, your emotional setup is changing. I can't put it in other words. So the fears can come up there. The, the fear of not belonging, the fear of having no safety. But the truth is that safety is within you, that you are the one that creates safety. And um, yeah, interesting and deep. Interesting and deep for sure. Saturn and Neptune in your fifth house. Now, this is good because uh, Pisces energy goes well with Scorpio and Saturn in... in um, uh, in, in uh, that fifth house means like it's almost like you're going to structure the things that you love to do, whether it is a hobby, you could be a bit stricter with your children, with the Saturn there. But at the same time, there's Neptune. So it's like a give and a take of being fluent and let loose and to control uh, in a good way, you know, to, to see and to follow up and all of that kind of stuff. So it could mean like, don't go too far with the Saturn, but don't go too far with the Neptune either. It's having that balance between boundaries for sure in that fifth house. Also love. It could be like, um, but it's not in a negative way because it's trining your energy, your scorpionic energy. So um, it's about having healthy boundaries in the love sector, but also being empathic, being open for someone, right? That you're not closed off too much. But all in all, a very deep year. And um, yes, I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to like it. Sagittarians. I'm looking at Chiron and the North Node in your fifth house. Ooh, I love that. I love that. That is healing through fifth house stuff. That is healing your heart. That is you focusing on your heart chakra. That is you focusing on new stuff. That relates to fifth house. If you're single, this is new romance for sure. This is fiery. This is amazing because it's kind of, it's trines your energy as well. So you're gonna be fired up for sure. And you know, the friends and so on, and how you're gonna fit in, it's less important now. It's less important. It's more important to do you and to explore. And if you're in a relationship as well, you could just enjoy yourself more. You could enjoy yourself more by doing the things that you love to do, whether you do it with your partner or not. It's about you getting really fired up here and doing the things that you've always wanted to do. If you want to go for the jet skiing, you do so. If you want to go for um, something bold, something, you go to the casino and you want to have fun there and... Uh, uh, you know, that playfulness, something that is a bit risky maybe, but don't too much, don't too much. Where is Saturn? Where is Saturn for you? It's in the fourth house. You won't do too much. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. But have fun. Also with your kids, they if you have them, or, or you could want them. And um, this is good energy. There is, though, some sort of a pain you need to go through with this um, Chiron there. So at the same time, because you're doing something that you love, you could be triggered. You know, you could be because what you're doing, what you love. Let's say you've been single for years and years and all of a sudden, yes, there is this new romance, this new person and it gets you all fired up. But, you know, it can trigger your fear of rejection, for instance. Right. So th there is definitely stuff going on there, but it wants to be healed and that's good. That's definitely good. But for you, it's on the menu. I'm going to have fun. And I'm worth it, you know, Aries. And healing energy. Your ruler, Jupiter, with Uranus in your sixth house. Wow, this is something that can relate to your work. All of a sudden, there's a growth, there's an expansion. There is maybe a new job. Um, when it comes to health and you have been dealing with some hard stuff, that could be because of an alternative side that you're also doing uh, of exploring that 
it's it's kind of fixing it you know and um it's really giving a lot of purpose in your day-to-day -day life jupiter is you and you are in that sixth house you are being busy and um so when you're a ruler but one of the best things it's a very lovely year for you in general sagittarians because your ruler is going to shift into the seventh house yes they say jupiter is not in the best place in in um how do you say that in gemini but it's in your seventh house so it means that you're gonna meet other people that are you know it, once every 12 years that happens when jupiter i'm a sagittarius rising and when I have Jupiter in the seventh house, I meet people that are important for me, that are important for me for my expansion. It's growth. You know, when you are single, you could meet the one. When you are already with someone, it could mean an upgrade or someone new that you are as well meeting that is important for your purpose in life. Um, so, yes, definitely a lot of uh, foreigners could. Uh, um, it could you could meet a lot of foreigners or you could meet people maybe they're not foreign but um they have an other lifestyle or they come from a different background and they can show you something because of that and teach you something learn you something you're gonna learn a lot by other people so it's it's uh i'm really looking forward to this energy as well you know maybe i'm gonna do some videos with you know People that are going to be a mentor for me. Why not? Why not? I hope for you, you're going to meet people. You're going to meet people for sure that are going to have your best interest. That's Jupiter. Jupiter is buoyant and Jupiter is very benefic. Like that for you. Pluto is transiting your third house. Ooh, there's your power. Mind. The mind is your power. So it could be transformations going on. It's also a relational house from siblings and neighbors, people in the neighborhood. With Pluto there, it could mean some, you know, first something breaks down before you can rebuild it again. So some transformations in those relationships for sure as well. Power struggles that could go on. So don't fall for the power struggles with siblings and neighbors. Don't fall for that. Uh, don't let them overpower you, but don't try to manipulate them either. If you're not doing that, you can't go wrong. Pluto in the third, though, if you surrender to that, you know, not wanting to manipulate other people's minds and not letting others manipulate your mind, if, you, if you're doing that, I mean, you're powerful. You're powerful in what you believe in and what you're... So you could be learning something that is very deep, that is very Pluto, that is um, giving you a lot of mental power for sure and um, a very hard uh, a study that needs a lot of uh, or a skill that you want to learn that needs a lot of depth to go into it before you have that skill it could mean that it could be you transform because you do short trips because you travel it could be that as well um so saturn and Neptune are in your fourth house. Yes, that's the that's a really contradictory contradiction. Can't you know? This is a long video. I know I'm so thrilled to do this, but um, can't talk anymore. But I hope you forgive me, dear Sagittarians. Anyway, Saturn in the fourth is about putting structure in your emotional life, putting structure at home right? Everything has to have its place. It's also, of course, your emotions. It's looking within. Saturn in the fourth house, looking within. It could also have to do with a parent. A parent needs um, more care, or there is something happening in their life that is quite severe, or that is, um, they could criticize you more of some sort, and you have to deal with that in a, in a healthy way. And um, with healthy boundaries, not too strict. And uh, not letting them walk all over you and boss you around. You don't want that. Um, Neptune is there as well, which is the opposite, which is like, ha, ah, 
you come home and you relax and you put on a candle and some beautiful music, uh, whatever it is that relaxes you. So it's having boundaries with your emotions as well, like opening up to your family, to your loved ones, but knowing to whom you want to do that and to who you're not going to do that. It's also for some of you, it could mean like some of you are struggling with, especially the Sagittarians who've got planets between 3 to 19 degrees of uh, Sagittarius, they're going to feel Saturn more, which is more that restricted energy, which is like you can't relax really good at home, but there's a lot of responsibility at home. And there's a lot of inner work, you know, what's going on on the inside. You could be tested there for sure on the emotional level as well. For those of you who've got planets at the very end of Sagittarius, like 25, 26, and so on of uh, Sagittarius, you're going to feel Neptune more. It's more like your past is dissolving, you know, your relatives, your, some things are dissolving, the good things and the not so good things. So that's uh, on the background. Capricorns, well, ha, huh, Pluto is out of your house. Yes, it tiptoes again. It tiptoes from September to November, but only for a short period that you have to, um, you know, have those things really making sure that you've done your transformation now. But Pluto is in the second. So this is about transforming your worth, you know, from superficial self-worth that is low into empowered, strengthened, healthy confidence. The same with money, you know. Pluto in the second house, I know a lot of people are scared about it. It's not that some of them, yes, some can have like a drastic change in their financial situation, but it's always to improve in the long run, to improve those structures that weren't good in the first place. For a lot of you, it's on an emotional level, though. It's on the confidence level. So you're ready here to become that and you already are it. But there's this potential of having that strength of personality that it strengthens you. Pluto transiting your second house. Um, it makes your structures better, your boundaries better. It's um, when you surrender to that, when you surrender you kind of are open towards growth in how you rely on yourself and only yourself, how you value that and how valuable you are. You, it's like you're getting to know yourself on a very deep level because of that. What I really love, what I really love for you, Jupiter, Uranus in your fifth house. Wow. Wow. I mean, it's in a fellow earth house, so there's definitely windfalls in the fifth house. Could be a new romance all of a sudden. If you've been single for a while, all of a sudden, boom, and it's real, and it's beautiful, and it's tangible, and it's supportive, and it's inspirational. Could be a child as well. It could be a project. You could start your own business. You can start a new hobby. That is so purposeful for you. You could start um, something that you love to do, that you always love to do, that is Torian-like, a hobby, sports that you love. And then Jupiter goes into your sixth house on the end of, uh, uh, on the end of May. So this is growth in work, in um, the purpose that you have. So you could have a new job, a new work, or expansion there, traveling because of work. Your routines are becoming more enjoyable, purposeful. Your health, you want to you wanna expand your, your good health. Chiron and the North Node in the fourth house. So you want to go towards healing. You want to go towards healing, you know, old wounds that your ancestry is carrying along. And this has to do with safety from within. The fourth house is emotional security. Who can give that? 
you know, some people sometimes ask me in readings, am, um, am I going to feel at home in Bali or in Belgium or in San Francisco? You know, the thing is, often they have the North Node and then um, Chiron there transiting in the fourth house because they have to find their home within. And then they can make their home everywhere. You know, the, heart, the home is where the heart is. It's definitely for you. It's definitely for you. That could be uh, you selling an old house, buying a new house, renovating, doing something new, being very active there. Saturn and Neptune in the third house. So that's your mind. So your mindset could be, I'm not going to say rigid, but structured. And at the same time, inspirational and inspired. And your words can be either one time they could be very structured, um, less is more. And then other times it's more open. It's more empathy with more empathy there. In the third house. I love this combination. It's a good combination to, to study Saturn, the combination of Saturn and Neptune in the third house because Saturn makes sure that you're going to study hard and Neptune makes sure that you're going to have the overview. That you're going to, you know, what is a good study? A good study is that you can make the overview, that you can connect all the dots. So you could be learning there something new and whatever it is, it can be a bit hard to do. But you expand, for sure. Aquarians, of course, dear Aquarians, this is all about this Pluto in your first house. Wow, wow. This is you going for you. This is you being your authentic self. This is you figuratively dying and getting a rebirth. This is important, especially when you have planets in Aquarius between zero and two degrees. This is important. This is like, you can't fake anymore. You can't fake anymore. You can't fake when you're having Pluto on your ascendant. It's out of the question. This is relationships. Relationships that are fake, that are not authentic, are, are can't, can't live. They're, they're going to go, you know. Because you are being authentic, you, you cannot live with someone who's not authentic or where you can't be authentic with. Some relationships are going to be formed now because you have that new authenticity and you're feeling it. You're going to attract people that are going to be falling for this very authentic version of yours. And, you know, like attracts like. So... What kind of part of your personality needs to go? Don't, it's about surrendering. It's about surrendering of all parts of you that are no longer fitting, that are already dead. So don't carry them along with you. It could have to do with a job. It could have to do with a relationship because the first house is everything. So it's about you're invited from the universe to get more authentic. Not that you're not authentic, but to even more, especially in the places where you've lost that. So, and there's fear involved, of course. There's fear involved of losing ourselves, basically. But the thing is, you're not going to lose yourself. You're going to find yourself again. That's the, that's the beauty of it. Then a the focus on your second house, which is the house of your money, your belongings, your self-worth. You've got Saturn and Neptune there. I think it's a good combination. Saturn is saying, ah, don't. Throw money out of the window. And Neptune is saying, hey, but I, I just want to, you know, I just want to be in La La Land. I am not want to be realistic when it comes to my self-worth, when it comes to my belongings. I don't care about money. I don't care about my belongings. You know, it's that balance between these two, right? Not being too restricted that you are just like eating water and bread, to, so to speak. And not being too overly uh, idealistic and so that you are throwing away your money, so to speak. It's like a give and take here between reality, a reality check, what is possible and what is not possible. But it's definitely to improve your financial situation and to improve your self-worth, for sure. 
The chiral north node is in the third house. It follows up every, every house, doesn't it? The third house. So where the north node is and chiron. So you could be triggered by neighbors. You could be triggered. The people that are going to be, that you are going to be triggered by is siblings, neighbors, people in the neighborhood, people around you. But they're showing you something new. They're showing you something real, something new. So there is a possibility of newness here in those connections. The same with your mindset. You could be traveling more, short trips. You could be communicating, learning, learning a new skill, teaching, um, traveling because of that, uh, communicating when you have your own business, doing something new, launching a new social media thing, whatever it is for you. It's a new way of thinking and you're ready for it. So some old narratives from the past, no one likes to give them up because the ninth house is our, our belief system, but you are giving it up. Some belief systems that are actually no longer working for you. And then Jupiter Uranus, last but not least, Jupiter Uranus in the fourth house. So there's something almost sacred happening there. The fourth house is a sacred house. It's the house of your um, core. Your it, um, It's the hidden treasure. It's... Um, Literally, your emotional setup, it's how you nurture yourself, how you see yourself. There could be with, with parents or with a parent, an improvement of a connection that could be they got, are going through something amazing and it has a knock-on effect on you. But it also has to do with literally your home. So you could be going to a bigger home um, and all of a sudden it could mean a, a better purpose in um in relaxing at home and and uh, in how you feel at home it could also mean that you relocate could also mean that you find more purpose in yourself you're feeling more home within your emotional setup is safer and you feel more safe not because something outside of you is happening but because you are safe within it's a treasure it's a treasure. And then Jupiter goes into your fifth house. I love that. That's going to be in Gemini, a fellow air sign. So Jupiter there in that fifth house at the end of May, it's expansiveness. You know, when you're single, you could meet someone and you meet someone who is expanding your mind. He or she could be from abroad or at least to have a different background. And you explore there, you expand, you have more freedom to enjoy yourself. By doing the things that you love to do, reading, writing, traveling, whatever it is for you. Sports, lovely. I love it. Last but not least, Pisces. Yes. What is the most important thing for you? Well, it depends on the degree. Saturn and Neptune are in your sign for the whole year. Now, for those of you who've got planets in the rather from the third, uh, the beginning of uh, Pisces, like the third, third degree up until 19 degrees, you're going to feel Saturn very strongly in your sign. So for these people, your blessing is in the boundaries and putting some boundaries with other people. So it could mean that in relationship, you toughen up. You are relying more on yourself. Um, it could mean that you have given yourself too much to someone and now you're saying no, for instance. You know, Saturn in the first house, it's not always a bad thing. But you're putting the foundations for the next 30 years. So do it slowly but surely. Less is more. And you could really put structure in your life um, that is going to suit you and help you for the next 30 years, right? So that could mean a new job, a new connection, a new relationship, but whatever it is, it's with responsibility, Saturn. The ones are having Neptune. Uh, Neptune will be at 25 to 29 degrees of Pisces. It's a totally different energy. That Neptune, They're going to feel the Saturn, of course, but it's more about a dissolvement about there are pieces of your personality that are dissolving. You don't have to do anything for it. It just happens. You know, it's a very Piscean thing. 
So you could be very inspired by that, but also having not too much boundaries. So you, I think it's, it's a lovely energy to have both for you Pisces because Pisces are known to not always have the best boundaries um not all pisces though but it's a trait that you know they they feel so one that they have a bit of trouble sometimes with putting boundaries with other people but now with this saturn it's more possible it's not as hard and the other way around you know if you only would have saturn alone in your sign it would be harsher it would be more like uh you know rigid which it is not you have that balance here and i like that for you Chiron and the North Node in the second house. This is interesting. This is about healing. This is about going for the self worth, going for the growth of your own money, hustling for the money, doing the efforts, improving your money, improving your situation, improving your self worth by raising the bar. By saying no when you mean to say no. You know, Saturn in the first house is good for that. It can trigger you though. You know, it's Chiron. Some old woundings around self-worth. And, um, but you're going through it. And that's how you heal. So you still have got, have got you as your best friend. That is Chiron in that second house for sure. Pluto is in the 12th house, so for most of the year. So Pluto in the 12th house is a lot about subconscious energy, but you deal well with that because you are representing the 12th house in a way. So there could be a lot of karma here coming to its end now and releasing that. So surrendering to that energy is your power. It's... Um, you're having like, you might have some compulsive energies, you know, compulsions, having them because of things that are not healed from the past and that, that could come up, but you let them come up. And that's how you kind of transform them. You're seeing them. They're coming out of that darkness. So the 12th house is also where we want to escape like addictions and all of that. You can transform them when Pluto is in your 12th house. So an interesting energy for sure. Jupiter and Uranus in your third house. This is loving, freedom, expansive energy. So up until May time, but especially during, you know, March, April, Jupiter, Uranus so close in to each other in your third house. The third house is relationships and what kind of relationships, you know, the more, um, the, the people around you, in the neighborhood, the siblings, there could be some really uh, positive thing happening with them or uh, with the connection, an improvement. Um, there could also be the third house is travel, short trips, you traveling, a lot more learning, teaching, learning a skill, fantastic time to do so. And it's going to feel so purposeful and so grounded at the same time. And then Jupiter shifting into your fourth house on the end of May and the rest of the year. That is feeling better at home. Feeling better on an emotional level. Feeling more content with yourself. Isn't that an amazing thing? Isn't that an amazing thing? Feeling content of who you are. With the good, the bad and the ugly. It's in Gemini. And you could... Uh, if you want to move, you could go towards something that you find more happy, that you are more happy, that you feel freer. You could do that for sure. Um, you could go uh, abroad, you know, if you want to live abroad. You could do that with Jupiter in the fourth house as well. And um, but definitely it's an expansion of your emotional security. And feeling good about yourself, you know, that's lovely. So for the Pisces, yes, it's quite an interesting time, uh, a deep time with that Pluto there, um, but also a, a time of some airy energy at the same time that you are having. And in relationships, yes, there's a lot happening for you in relationships because of these two big planets in your sign. So um, 
it's about that balance, right? Between not giving too much to people and not doing nothing at all, right? It's the 50-50 thing. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. This was probably one of the longest video I ever did. But I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, spread the video everywhere if you want to. And uh, thank you again. Bye-bye.